Lesson 6. Existence of God. How do we know by our natural reason that God exists? We know by our reason that God exists because of the existence of the world, the order and harmony of the universe, and the testimony of our conscience. The existence of the world. The existence of the world proves the existence of God because it could not have come into existence by itself. Everything in the world had a beginning. Men, animals, plants, the earth, planets and stars all had a beginning. They could not have come into existence by themselves. They must have been made by someone who had no beginning. Planets and men could no more have made themselves than a watch can make itself. The astronomer Kircher had a friend who denied the existence of God. During a visit one day, this friend saw a globe in the study of the astronomer. This is an interesting globe, said he. Who made it? Why, replied Kirscher, it just made itself. The friend had a hearty laugh at the idea. Kirscher asserted, it would be much easier for a little globe like that to make itself than for the immense globe of the earth to create itself. When we see footprints on the sand, we conclude that someone has passed that way. The universe is filled with the footprints of a supreme creator. We find his imprint in the very mind of man, in its deep aspiration to the infinite. If God does not exist, man's deepest striving tends to nothing, is absurd. The Order and Harmony of the Universe The order and harmony of the universe prove the existence of God because they lead us to infer the existence of a supreme architect and preserver of surpassing skill. The heavenly bodies go along their appointed courses, age after age. The seasons succeed one another year by year. There is splendor, beauty, arrangement and order everywhere. The whole universe is governed and preserved by a mutable law. If you plant an orange seed, you are certain an apple will not spring from it. Every morning, you are sure the sun, when it rises, will appear in the east. At night, you can go peacefully to sleep, assured that after your rest the day will come again. To say that this universal order is the result of accident, or that the planets direct their own courses, is as foolish as to say that an automobile goes sensibly around the city streets, running itself. The heavens show forth the glory of God, and the firmament declareth the work of his hands. God is the intelligent cause. Long ago, the pagan Cicero said, when we contemplate the heavens, we arrive at the conviction that they are all guided by a being of surpassing skill. The great astronomer Newton often uncovered and bowed when God's name was uttered. How does the testimony of our conscience prove the existence of God? By our conscience we can distinguish right from wrong. Our conscience approves the right and condemns the wrong. Thus, within ourselves, there is a recognition of a supreme lawgiver to whom we are responsible, who will reward the good we do and punish the evil. Only the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Those who persist in denying the existence of God in spite of external and internal testimony are atheists not rarely blinded by pride. To them can be applied the words of our Lord. Seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, neither do they understand, for the heart of this people has been hardened, and with their ears they have been hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, 
lest at any time they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their mind and be converted and I heal them.